First of all, I just want to say this is not a paid presentation. This is my setup for my Mars Hydro SP3000. The area that I'm growing it in is about 2.2 meters by 2.2 meters. So the scope, so it covers from this bowl here or these plants here going all the way across to those red leaves you see there but it goes beyond that because I've got some leaf propagations over close to the edge of course and also that chest of drawers over there or the light can cover up to that area except I haven't got any more space <laughs> so I can't put anything else in there so the height of the grow light as well is about 800 millimeters to the table here so if I raise that higher then that grow light can still cover a wider area than what I've got here hello there my name is Liz a self-confessed succulent addict welcome to my channel growing succulents I mainly grow propagation or leaf propagations or cuttings or any plants that need growing fast I find have benefited from having the grow light. I have the same plants grown outside in my different areas or different zones out in the open and I find that the ones grown under the grow light grows much much Faster. So I've got all sorts of different plants. It's not only succulents. I also got some indoor plant cuttings growing in water over there and they seem to be loving it. Got some sticky ribbon here to trap the gnats, the fungus gnats. And I also have the fan. I will have the fan running for about a couple of hours a day only just so as it can circulate the air and doesn't stagnate the soil. I run this grow light for about 12 to 16 hours a day and I've set it at 75%. So this knob, you can see, it can darken and brighten. <laughs> I find that the succulents are responding really well to it. Of course, there are some plants that doesn't really go 100%, like say my Echeveria whimsy over here. So this is my own hybrid. Outside, I think this plant prefers to be grown out in the cold and out in the element because the plant started life as being grown in winter covered in frost when it was still a baby leaf so I think it's more used to the cold than being out here in here it's a constant say 15 to 20 degrees Celsius and this plant has actually etiolated so it's become sort of stretching or reaching out for the light so it's saying that i am not used to this lack of light i need more light so that's what it's saying even the mother plants here has turned yellow so that shows that it's not photosynthesizing so it needs more light it need it needs more heat so this is Graptopetalum superbum or superbum that I've grown from leaves. So this lot here are beautifully colored Graptoveria mapping. They were grown on, or the leaves was plucked on the 21st of December last year. And the speed of the growth, you can see, so this is probably the biggest ones here, but the colors is just amazing. This is my Nexana. So this is the 31st of January when the leaves were plucked or I've actually done a video uh, head chopping this plant. So the mother plant is over here growing happily and it's formed two heads. So now it's got three heads. And the top head of that is this one. It's also growing some leaf uh, propagated babies in it. So this is my Graptoveria lovely rose. So these are actually the smallest of the bunch. And I've actually counted them last night. So there's this tray here. And it's just growing in coconut coir. That's just straight, oopsie, coconut coir. I find that they grow fastest on coconut coir. So in two years 
of having just one plant. So I started with one Graptuveria, so about one of them. So that's probably the smallest one. So the smallest size, I don't know which is smaller, than about that size actually when I got my plant. So I have to let it grow first so it will form all the leaves in the bottom. And the plant that was given to me, the leaves, the bottom leaves like this one here, that was already stripped. So I'm only left with say the top part of it. So I've got nothing to pluck or harvest or leaves to propagate. So I have to wait one year just to grow them. One plant actually a year and then I was able to harvest five leaves. And then from that five leaves that I grew, I was able to now grow 50. I got about 50 of them now all together. So I have more here and about four more in there. So all I'm saying is that without the grow light, it would not be possible for me to have this much plant in such a short span of time. So also one example is this Echeveria olivia. So this Echeveria olivia, I've got one, two, three, four, five row sets that you can see here and there's probably another one plant in here, small one that's growing. So this one, when I bought it a few months ago, I got one plant and it was growing well for about two months. After a couple of months, it just decided to die on me. So it's a good thing I check my plants every day, especially the new ones. And I was able to cut it in time and the leaves started falling off. So, and then the stem started getting dark and so the, it's indicating that the leaves has or the plant has experienced some stress, nematodes or fungus or anything like that that sort of makes them drop their leaves off. I still can't figure it out why they do that. So I have a few plants that does that when I first got it. But to me, I don't say it's a bad thing. It's actually a good thing because now I'm able to propagate from them. So I keep track of it. So I make sure I check every day and then that way it's early enough to catch it and I can harvest the leaves. So now from that one plant, I now got five here and I got more growing in here. So these ones are actually just roots growing now. So this is not going to take any more. And, but so I still don't throw them away. I leave them there because they might still have a chance of growing or having late bloomers, I call them. So these two here, or three maybe, so one, two, oh, sorry, there's about four. Hang on, wait a minute. This one is actually a Lowy. I think this might be a Lowy as well. So one, two, and three might be a Lowy. And then, but this one is an Olivia, and that's an Olivia, and that's an Olivia as well. So, so how many is that? Five, six, seven, eight, eight. And another Olivia here, so that's nine, nine Olivia, one Olivia, okay. So I got nine Olivia instead of just having one. So to me, that's a bonus, that's a positive, that's not negative at all. This is a Ficus Benjamina, but it's actually Pitio, uh, ETBT Ficus Pitiolaris, okay. So that's what I got, and when I bought it, it had a couple of leaves. It wasn't as healthy looking as this one. The leaves were smaller and it's got a codex. So I'd say this is also a succulent. But anyway, this one, after acquiring it at about, say, a month later, I put it next to uh, an area, well, in my family room. So not here in the grow light. And it started losing its leaves. So I thought it's already died on me. So what I did is put it back here to see what happens because I was ready to throw it away. And then it started growing leaves again. So I would give the credit to my grow light for doing that because had I not have the grow light, that would have died or got thrown away. So this one is my oldest propagation tray. This oldest propagation tray, I was, I've been meaning to put it outside to repot it and everything. But something is happening all the time with this tray. So every time I say, okay, I'll take you out. And then something else happens. So anyway, so this one's, this is my Miranda. Uh, these are all grown from a leaf or a Chivivia Gavoris Miranda. And I was so excited with this one because one of them grew this. It became a monstrous form. So which is what I like. I like crested, variegated, monstrous, or anything that would grow unusual, I like. I have a very temperamental string of hearts, but this string of hearts that's growing here was given to me as a cutting by a friend of mine. And thank you, Jem. And this one here under the grow light, 
it's just growing marvelously so anyway I have a temperamental one which I took some cuttings but I actually put it on the opposite side over there on that tray but I already harvested it and put it back or repotted it this one now I'm gonna have to remove them and repot them as well because all this plant has to go outside or I have to plant them in a bigger pot in preparation for when I'm not here because I'll be going away for our winter trip soon and I will be gone for about three to four months. And I don't expect my daughter to turn the grow light on and off and water my plants. I don't do that. So anyway, and then she'd feel bad if she kills it. So it's better that I put it away outside and nature can look after them. Speaking of the variegated string of hearts, I was having difficulty growing them. So I put them in different places. I put them in the bathroom. I put them in my lounge room, in the family room, everywhere. And this string of hearts was just so slow. But the minute I put it under the grow light, it just grew fast. She only gave me about, hang on, it's just about three inches long, a couple of strands. So actually one, she gave me one first, and then she gave me this other second one from December. So this one is growth from December, and the other one was sometime in November. So, but this one was much shorter, and then this one during the summer months, it was warmer, so it grew really fast, so I'm really impressed with my grow light. So because the grow light is the one who's done this all. So this is, what are you? Echeveria Doris Taylor. For the life of me, before my grow light, I could not grow a Doris Taylor. I tried so many times, but it just keeps dying on me. The leaves wouldn't take on. But now I've got one, two, three, four, probably five. Is that four? Yeah, four. Four Doris Taylor. I saw some one somewhere as well, another uh, fussy wussy plant or a uh, fluffy, hairy plant somewhere, but I can't remember now. But anyway, so this, let's just go and have a look at what I've got here. So most of these plants will grow slower outside than uh, in here. And also, look, I've got my thing soaking in there. This is still, what are you? April. Oi, look. Graptopytum Supreme. I don't know where that one is. So maybe these little ones here. I think the Graptopytums, a couple of them. And that one, yes, most of them are Bernalensi, the 15th of November. So this one, I kept forgetting to water them. I had them growing inside. I took them outside. And then now I'm bringing them inside again because it's just low outside. Very healthy looking string of turtles. Kid you not, this one is like, oh, really, really... Look at that, very watery, and every single one of them is just like fat. It's like a gemstone. So, and then more uh, sedum, Jamaican sunset, that was taking a long time growing as a leaf. Like, I've grown them from a leaf. And this is probably two years old already, because I've got it since I plucked them. And... I had them growing outside and it just wouldn't take on until, of course, I put them in the grow light and look at them now, all long and needed to be transplanted, but I'm still going to keep them somewhere uh, because it's coming on, it's autumn here in Australia, it's coming on to winter, so I can't really put them out, but I just need to transplant them into my master succulent soil mix because all the soil that they're growing in is just coconut core or coconut peat. And also my pickle plant, look at my pickle plant in the corner trying to reach out for the light. And that really bushy Selaginella over there, look at that nice and green and healthy. That's ready to be placed in a terrarium or something like that. And of course, down here are my Romeos and Taurus. So that's a Taurus. I've got three plants from that. So there's one hiding under the leaf there. And my Romeo. Oh, Romeo. It's got two baby Romeos. And then the other one, which I gouge out in the center, did not produce any babies. So it's just a straight cut will do. And no fancy things. Just chop it off straight and then you get babies. And all the leaves, by the way, has just... Okay, I'll go there. So my Romeo leaves are all very rooty. Look. All, well, not all, but some that have grown roots, but no, no baby. And my Taurus here are the same, but 
Oh, there's a little spider. I'm sorry, spider. Okay, now this one, no roots. Oh, look, there's a little mealybug. Now it's a dead mealybug. So you really have to check, uh, but there's no babies on that one. Do I have more Rolly? This Rolly as well. Oh, that one might have a little pup growing as well, so I still leave it there. Anyway, there's one Taurus. Where is my Taurus? Here. Hang on, I lost it. There we There you go. <laughs> I was like, I get so excited because oh, this one is just all leaves. I think that's a Taurus, but it's just all leaves. I just want to see how it would grow or if it's going to grow little baby Taurus on the tip. Anyway, what are you? Paris. Paris, you sit here. Now, this is my other Taurus over here growing with two heads. So my Taurus has produced five plants and I still have the mummy Taurus. So now, from one chopping off the head, I get six plants all together. There you go. Had I just left it, then uh, I would only have one plant. And also, it would only take me a year to rehabilitate this, to make it grow into its full glory again. But otherwise, everything in my grow light, I'm very happy. Augusta is the same. This Augusta just keeps dying on me. So this one, it just grows happily for a couple of months or three months after that it actually got thick and then it just decided to lose all its leaves but i was able to save the leaves and grow half of them here and they're all growing healthily look at that it's all augusta 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 and i still got another one somewhere i think that one there and anyway their counterpart the ones i left on the pot are this one this is the difference can you believe that so they are plucked at the same time, and then, well, they fall in off the leaves at the same time. And then this one, there's no roots. But normally, what I do with that one is I remove the dry leaves. And you go like that. And then see those little root there in the bottom, so where the root's going to form. That's what I stick on the soil, like say, something like that. And then that will just take on and root up. So another spot here. So this one, I'm trying to grow some variegated Graptopetalum superbum and no success yet but I'm still hopeful that I will because this is my chihuahuaensis 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 look at my chihuahuaensis and one chihuahuaensis changing color but it's mostly yellow and very pointy some little redding on the tips and yet see this is far away from the light and it's going red so these chihuahuaensis here are like away from the grow light and look how red and green the tips are and this one is like yellow okay and that one is more yellow so if I pull back you can see that look that one and this one those two compared to these other three are just chalk and cheese. Oh, there's another one here as well. Look. So that one is just more green, even though, say, up close and personal. So it's close to these two now. But yet that one has remained like sort of normal standard color. So it looks like I'm going to get some variegated ones. Pachyveria pachytoides. And I never expected it to grow. Only one leaf. And then it grew. And it grew really thick all that came from one leaf and then now look those two are variegated and those other ones looks like oops I drop a leaf but it might grow again so it looks like those two might still have a chance of variegating but it doesn't matter I've got two variegated ones so I'm already happy with that one my Bernalensi so this one I thought this is I've got one variegated Bernalensi which is that one there so, so far I got one variegated Brinolensi and that's one leaf and two plants. One plant is variegated and the other one is just green. And from this distance as well, it looks like an avocado cream, but it's not. That is a Brinolensi. But this one now, these are Brinolensi standard, but look how pink they are. And my macadamia is looking so gorgeous. Look at that. Beautiful. Sedivaria. Silver Star Mabina, this one here. Look how pretty the colors 
And then at first I thought there might be something eating the roots or some mealybug or something like that. But then I dug one out and there's none. It was all nice and healthy. So this is my variegated royo. This variegated royo nearly died on me. So I was able to save it by taking a couple of what's left over. And then now it grew to this nice, healthy, beautiful plant. Look at that. So now they can go outside. And even this one, they're growing so fast. So I've already stripped just about. I, should I get some more? I don't know. That Sedum Bronze Delight variegated. And my Hoshikage is growing healthily. Again, that one that should have been dead. Luckily, I've got the grow light and then now it's alive. Echeveria Gavoidis Golden Maria. So that's a Golden Maria. Uh, also, my Crassula Fantasy uh, needs to go outside because that doesn't really like, it prefers the cold. But look how many. Uh, I had three little pimple. <laughs> now there's only like one big pimple, the one pimple small and then the other one is not a pimple anymore. It's not an acne. It's turned into an acne. And then that one Purposorum. Grown from a leaf. And my Areophilia Kalankowi. Look how thick it is. I still remember when it was just tiny like this much. And look at it now. That needs to be soft and fluffy. Needs to be repotted. Or should I just leave it? Because that's in my master succulent soil mix anyway. So I just need to take it outside. Or somewhere where there's a lot of light actually. This pot has to go upstairs where it's warm and it's got plenty of light. So overall, if you say I'm very happy with my grow light, that's an understatement. So I'm ecstatic. So everything is growing rosy. Look at that. Oh, coming up roses. Is that what the saying? So 